Welcome back guys. 2023 Road Glide here for its first thousand mile service and a 472 fueling cam install. So I'm going to do some base runs here. We'll just do uh, probably three. I'll be tuning it with the power vision later. So I don't really care at this point what the AFR is. Let's just do some base runs, see where we're at power wise, and then we'll get it up on the bench, get it apart and get it back on the dyno and see what our numbers were. All right, guys, I don't know, you really won't be able to see this, but we're looking at about, on average, we'll say 74 horsepower. I don't know, about 104 foot-pounds of torque, so not too bad. Let's get the 472 fueling cam in it, and uh, we'll see what we gain for horsepower. Stick around. Before we get going, let's see what's in the box. This is what we're gonna use for our project. Our fueling box here. Get my ugly mug the whole time. So let's see what we have in the box. This will be our fueling 472 kit. Packing, we always get some nice, some stickers with fueling. The destructions as always, we won't really need those, but we may have to peek at them. Gasket kit, this should be our cam. Take a good look at this. They love to give stickers, more stickers, more destructions. Let's go look at our cam here. That's a good looking cam, big lobes. And yeah, this should go well within our 117 project. Stickers, instructions, advertising stuff. Feeling's great at sending out advertising material. Our tappets. Tappets and our bolt kit, our cam retention kit, Loctite, which we'll use our own, but it's always nice to have it, especially if you were doing this at home. Our cam assembly lube, you can use just oil, it's fine if you don't want to use that. Our bolts, our fastener, lubricant, as most of you know, uh, I do use Loctite. I know fueling doesn't love that, but that's okay. There's more instructions. Oh, look at this. And a pocket constitution. Great American company, you gotta love that. On top of that, there well, should be a cam bearing in here too. This should be our cam bearing, yes, cam bearing. And we're also gonna be using more grease. Bolt kit, which is always good. And is anybody that watches my channel and knows me, I like the one piece rods. I don't like the adjustables, they tend to come loose. They flex any chance I have to run one piece. That's what I'll do. And of course, we're gonna run the fueling breathers for the M8s. I really like these, great product. All right, there's all our materials for the job other than some uh, different gaskets I may use other than what comes in the kit. But usually these ones are pretty good. Yeah, these are the Comatics, we'll use those. What I don't have here yet is the, the SNS head pipe and Chromeworks mufflers. Uh, they're not here yet. And uh, we're gonna be doing a, a Power Vision uh, to tune the EFI. So, oh, one other thing. Uh, tap it cuffs, always run these, uh, better than the plastic. Also, I've seen a lot of videos lately uh, on Facebook and on YouTube, um, comments on Facebook and videos on YouTube the small screw that holds these in place on the stock plastic units uh they're breaking well if if you've watched some of my videos prior i highly recommend you heat the screw before you take it out because they pre-put a lock patch on these and that lock patch which has a chemical in it that releases as it as the screw or the bolt is going into the into the threads the, it releases a chemical which is a hardener and sets the Loctite. So 
It's, it's called dry lock. It's, it's made by the Henkel company, which also makes Loctite. It's just a different type of Loctite. And when that stuff sets up, man, even on the light screws, it, it, it can bind up, it can gall. So hit them with some heat and the screw will come out every time and you won't be having to strip your engine and, and uh, send your cases out to be uh, machined to get that screw out. So it gets pretty expensive. So watch our channel. We have some good uh, tips on there about that. Thanks and uh, let's get going. guys things are progressing well on our 474 fueling cam install project on this 2023 uh, road glide with an m8 engine a couple things i want to touch upon the you may have seen me using heat on the bolt that retains the plastic tappet guide and yes as i'm using heat these are going to melt that's just the way it is we're going to put in the billet sns tappet guides anyway or tappet cuffs as they call them and the reason this is you have to use the heat is you're going to notice a white lock patch on here well it's called dry lock dry lock is a lock type product there are other companies that make it um, you have to be a certified facility to actually put that on the bolts there's numerous ones around the country but i want to just read to you exactly what's happening and how it works and i have it on my phone so i get it just right for you uh, how does it work? The shearing forces caused by the insertion of the fastener crushes the micro spears and releases the activator to mix with the resin. And it makes it a very strong product, a good bind. It's not going anywhere. It's not going to loosen up. But I have seen so many videos recently, either on YouTube or uh, pictures on Facebook, where guys are like, oh, what do I do? It's broken. Well, yeah, they're breaking it because you got to use heat. I've, you, I've, I've mentioned it in other videos, use heat. You'll even notice on some of these side cover screws, guys sit there and they either hit it with air or you know the electric uh, screw guns, which I don't like to use. I like air, I'm, I'm old school. Anyway, uh, that's besides the point, but you have to hit these with air. I mean, with uh, uh, I just use a regular ratchet so I can feel it. Sometimes you have to hit them with some heat to break up that lock patch, because if you don't, you're gonna snap screws. And once you do that, it makes for a really bad day. So again, use heat on the fasteners if you need to. Do it by hand, you can feel it. If it's starting to gall up or bind, you know to stop. Take some time, hit it with some more heat, maybe even a little, uh, some type of fluid to get in there some to, to loosen things up. But uh, I, I have a Molly lube that I use from uh, Zep, which works great. It's called Zep 45, uh, a penetrating oil. So a good penetrating oil with some heat. And uh, yeah, you're gonna destroy the tappet cuffs, but it doesn't matter because you're throwing them out anyway, and you're gonna save yourselves a lot of headaches. Just want to do a quick comparison here of the 472 fueling cam and the stock cam. You can see the lobe difference, big difference in the ramp, and uh, timing's quite a bit different too. So it's going to be real interesting to see. I haven't run this particular cam before. Uh, we've been doing a lot of the 3030 star cams, but this is. Uh, a little bit different for us. And the other one that would probably be close to this that we used was an SNS. and uh, We did use one of their cams recently, but uh, this is a new cam for us. We'll give it a shot and see how it works out. Everything's going smooth so far with our 472 fueling cam install. We're going to install our tappets. Again, always make sure the snap ring is seated properly in all the tappets. I have had, uh, you know, more than a few in the day that have not been seated properly and been an issue. So it's something you always want to check. And we're going to put in the SNS tappet cuffs. Remember, we don't use the factory stock plastic ones. And uh, We'll just keep going from there. We are going to install the one-piece 
push rod tubes, which everybody knows I like to do. Yes, it's more work, but I feel I'm giving my customer back a uh, better product by doing so. Also, you'll notice on this install, we use the factory cam plate and uh, oil pump. Reason being, had good results 20 and later with the updated pump. We really haven't seen issues. So uh, we will go ahead and uh, finish the installation. So overall, pretty good results. Oh, I would say. All right, buddy. My good friend Tom, the dyno guy. He's the man. Tom, tell me about your shop. Grant County Choppers. Kind of specialize in Harley performance work. Got in-house machine shop, dyno services. Got in-house and a mobile dyno center. We travel around to usually some of the major rallies. A few local other ones, but yeah. Have a great time doing it and like to make people happy. Yeah. So when Tom's in town here, uh, I'll have him come and he'll either bring bikes and run them on the dyno or I have some work waiting for him. and. Uh, you know, he'll run them for me. And uh, what'd you think of the numbers we got out of this fueling uh, cam? Uh, great today. Yeah, turned out really good. Got a uh, 33 horsepower and like 18 torque. So yeah, worked out really good. Yeah. yeah. Customer and should be real happy. He should be. And now, how does this fueling 474 compare to- 472. 472, 472. 472. that's right. 472 compared to like the s, &S that you like to use. Uh, 475 s, s I like to use in some. Uh, you're probably going to see a little bit more torque with a 475, but otherwise very comparable. Very comparable. Very comparable. It'll, it'll pull out harder, longer. It'll pull more to six grand probably, which not a lot of people use, but some like that. So it's just a customer's choice. Yeah. And then how about, I know you said you, we could gain probably a few more horse just going up. Uh, you've seen some change with the intake manifold. Yep. The manifold, the, it has, the plastic one has such a real square corner in it. The aluminum one's a lot more flowing and forgiving. So we could pick up another horse. Maybe oh, probably four to maybe five both ways. Four to five. And let's let's talk exhaust for a minute. So okay. what do you, I, I know you prefer a lot of the two into ones, but not the real short ones. Yeah, short ones usually don't seem to work very well on an M8. Uh, and, and the small diameters are fine on a on a uh, smaller motor wise stock stuff. But if you got, you know, 124s, 128s and that, uh, size definitely is a matter and a stepped pipe is definitely mandatory. Yeah, step for sure. Yep. So what were our final numbers? Because we switched to SAE. We were at STD uh, before. Uh, basically 120 torque and 107 horsepower. That, that's pretty good. I mean, yep. we picked and started up. out started out 102 and a half torque and 73 horsepower. Yeah, so we picked up quite a bit. That, yeah, that's, very good. Uh, customer would be pretty happy with that. I'm really, really happy with the tune. Uh, you know, you could see it. What, what it takes to develop a map. I mean, we've been doing this for quite a while. We've been here for at least few hours doing yep. this maybe even a little more closer to four it takes time some are easier than others i'm some sure are easier than others, yep. of course with the new torque based tuning system it's uh, a little a lot bit more trickier a lot, a lot trickier with the new stuff so mm. but uh you definitely have it down because you've been doing how many years now no uh, about 15 years 15 I've years a yeah. couple different dinos yeah that's, that's really good so uh, anyway any of your tuning needs uh anything you come to motorcycle garage or if you're out in the midwest hit tom up at his facility what's your address tom I'm in Herman, Minnesota, 220 Atlantic Avenue, Herman, Minnesota. Yeah, so uh, any of you guys here in Phoenix when it's nice and hot in the summer and you want to go cool off, head, head that way. <laughs> yeah, but, oh, uh, beautiful. Minnesota. Well, I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, my customer, it's a couple days before Thanksgiving, so uh, yeah, wrap this up and uh, get ready to go home. So yeah. make sure you like and subscribe. I really appreciate everybody watching, and uh, we'll keep the content coming. Yep. Talk to you later. Ride safe.